Boom! This thing's cool. I'm guessing all these things on top are like charging the shell, giving it a bunch of energy. That slide that's moving back sure does look similar to like a, a 1911 slide, doesn't it? All right. That dude just evaporated. It looks intense. Do you know what else is intense? Camping. There's this uh, argument you're not supposed to shoot 50 cals at people because it's uh, it's anti-equipment, but like people have equipment on them, so I mean. Ooh, fancy. New fingerprints detected. Increasing volume by 30. <laughs> New fingerprints detected. So. This looks cool. It's pretty sci-fi and everything. I have an issue with fingerprint guns, though, and a lot of people want to make these things mandatory. The issue is they're electronic. And I know this is 2023. We're watching 2077. Things get more reliable. But, like, there's just so many issues I have with owning a finger. I don't even like fingerprint safes. Um, one of the places I teach at, we sell uh, the fingerprint safes, and I think they're great for the most part. I like a good mechanical combination and I like a good trigger that's going to work if I pull it. I will do a good job of keeping my firearms out of uh, naughty hands. I don't want to have to deal with like fingerprint baloney. So it's cool, it's it's a really neat idea. Um, I am not a fan. So we got like a machine pistol going on here. We're shooting gangsta style. You know, actually if you are shooting, one technique shooting one hand it is to cant it because it tightens all the tendons in your arm and does provide a little stability. But there's other issues that come up with that. I tend to just present a normal firearm and then just drop one hand and that's, that's how I tend to shoot. I think that's pretty stylized. So I'm not really sure what that thing is on top, if it's a sight or what, I have no idea. All right, we're ready to rock here. Okay. If you just like summon that firearm, all right, the Lexington power. It's either a machine gun or we're doing burst. Ooh, oh, this is uh, launching very high energy uh, bullets. I wonder how big the bullets are because, like, if you've ever fired a Glock with a switch, that's what the kids call them. If you've ever fired a, a machine pistol, uh, they go very fast. They go very, very fast, and it's, it's almost pointless. It doesn't really make sense. Like the rounds go in a heartbeat and they're kind of hard to control too this is in the future maybe they're really tiny rounds that like expand as they fly out mm -hmm. what do we got here oh so is this an energy weapon looking thing here all right sounds really cool and it looks neat i love that they are they insert the magazine they rack the slide maybe the slide was already back how most firearms work I'll just launch that across my living room if the slide is already back, most pistols you can just pull and let go and get it back into action once you insert the magazine. I thought that was really neat that they're doing that. I like when they add these manipulation things to video games. Ooh. Big ass revolver. What you got going on here? The burn ya. The burn ya. Oh, burn ya. I was hoping it would be. This looks like a kind of a big energy weapon kind of thing. Oh, ouch. Oh. All right, good graphics there. You let them knife you, though. I don't want to get knifed. Sometimes you'd almost rather get shot than stabbed. Boom! All right, so it's got a, uh, a round indicator on the back here. Oh, cool, so you just load a gigantic cylinder into the side. That whole top thing comes up. That's pretty neat looking. All right. Slams it back down. I like that. I like that a lot. Oh, this thing looks neat. This is, like, very, like, 90s futuristic. I wonder if it's suppressed. But smart. It says it's smart. Not suppressed. I think currently it's a terrible idea to implement for several reasons. First off, anything can be hacked. Anything electronic in some way can get hacked, right? So if it gets Wi-Fi updates or whatever, you know, I don't like that. Now some people are thinking, well, just like an electronic like fingerprint thing. Okay, that's a breaks. Uh, what if you got blood on it? You know, what if you got dirt on it? Batteries are dead. And I, I get that there's fail safes for all these, and I think at some point they will become reliable enough, but they're not there yet, and I am uh, hesitant to deal with any legislation for it. And none of the safes that I have, none of the uh, even little like quick access safes, they're all mechanical. They're all very reliable. Um, I don't trust the technology yet, but I think it's definite something to be explored. I really like the uh, the latest Judge Dredd, and it was kind of neat how uh, his gun operated. That was that was really cool. Yeah, I think it's technology that is 100% worth pursuing, and I 100% do not trust uh, myself yet. Not shooting a big caliber there. All right, so we got a hammer fired gun. I like hammer fired guns. This is either a single action or a double action. Since the hammer's cocked back, that's probably a single action firearm. Kind of like this. 
This lovely uh, GI government model 1911. See, single action does one thing. Those are the best triggers, especially on the 1911s. So I'm a fan. I'm a fan of this gun. Wish I could see the side view. It looks like he's doing a good, at least some type of two-handed grip, thumbs forward grip. Oh, what do we got here? A drum magazine going in the side. All right, that's interesting. Okay, it looks very, uh, like, very futuristic, very, almost plastic. Like, it looks like, uh, like a kitchen like food processor or something on the back of it. I don't know. All right, so it's like an energy thing. Oh, he does a little flip as he puts it in there. Cool. Well, I think this is neat. Pretty realistic looking optic. That's nice. All right. I don't know what it would be at that angle. This has got to be some kind of, you know, futuristic, like, energy weapon thing like that. But I don't know. That was neat. That was kind of neat. All right. These kind of look like 1911s, don't they? The Unity Power. Oh, so with the recoil there, this is going to be a... a a very powerful pistol cartridge with how much it's sliding back. You know what that looks like? This kind of looks like a Hudson manufacturing. This is the Hudson H9, I believe, and it was a striker fired 1911S prototype, but it had a really big honk in front end. It was this really slick action system, and unfortunately, it just didn't take off, and I don't think the company even exists anymore. I have some friends that have them. I, you know, after I build, finish building my fence and, you know, Build my sheep shelter and all this other crap. And, you know, I wouldn't mind having one at some point, but I got I got more important things on the list right now. The payload on the elevator. Arm it. Let gravity do its thing. Let gravity do its thing. Oh, what do we got here? Fancy cowboy action going on here. All right, so it has a hammer in the back, so and the hammer's cocked back. Must... Okay. So this is clearly an energy weapon, which uh, I don't know if it's charging an actual cartridge or bullet or whatever, but it's it sure is cool looking. That slide that's moving back sure does look similar to like a, a 1911 slide, doesn't it? All right. That's neat. All right. So magazine. It's either a magazine or some type of like battery or or whatever is loaded in the front. All right. Yeah, because it doesn't look like he's loaded it up through the pistol grip. Yep. So that's in front of the action, which is interesting. Big chonky boy. Look at how it ejects the spent casings. That's pretty neat. Just flies out right out the center off the back. All right, here we go. This is uh, looks a little more uh, like something that we'd have today. Probably a short barrel rifle. Boom. Yep, yep, this is pretty realistic. I believe that this thing exists. There we go. We got the magazine. Dealing with the charging handle. Good looking sights on it. I like this gun. I'd run one of these. Now from the casings that are coming out, it almost looks uh, almost looks like a pistol caliber carbine. Ooh, fancy. All right, I don't know what that did, but it sure looked cool. It's almost like the, the Predator's mouth when he finally takes his mask off. So we got an optic that's giving you all sorts of information on there. All right. That dude just evaporated. All right. I don't know what he's shooting, but it looks intense. Do you know what else is intense? Camping. Anyways, this is awesome. I would not mind having one of these. The technical side of me just wants to know, like, what's behind the, the thought process. And it's like, it's just supposed to be cool, man. Well, it is cool. I'll acknowledge that. I still want to know how it works. And then how do I make one? All right, so we have a machine gun here. Just a traditional, good old machine gun. Kind of kind of gives me some, like, uh, some Swiss vibes a little bit. We got a reciprocating charging handle here. Maybe a little old school Beretta, a little little Daewoo going on. All right, I would feel comfortable with one of these. Yeah, that's that's more up my alley. All right. What do we got here? Got a tiny little tiny little window for that sight system. I wonder if that's like a red dot or if that, I don't know what that is. We'll see. Oh, check out the muzzle flash coming out of there. So that's got to have a really unique muzzle break on it. You can kind of see the muzzle brake. So, muzzle brakes are cool. They they do help with recoil and, and accuracy, but you are a jerk face if you put a muzzle brake on an AR-15. They already don't recoil. You're just going to piss everybody off for standing next to you. So don't do that. All right, we got a double stack magazine, a ball pup. Good old ball pup. Ball pups are when uh, you load and everything, all the action and everything's back there, and you have the trigger up front, and what you can do with a ball pup is get a 16-inch barrel, but it's way further back, as opposed to a uh, lovely work gun. So this is like a 14 and a half inch barrel with a calm-down ATF. It's a welded and pinned, 
suppressor. This brings it up to 16 inches, 16 inches. But you see how all the actions and controls and everything are behind what makes it work? A bow pup will have the pistol grip and the trigger and all that stuff up here, which means it's much shorter, but still legal. And it's uh, much easier for maneuvering in tight spaces. So they're, they're pretty cool. The Steyr AUG, Steyr AUG. The Tavor Desert Tech makes some uh, some pretty cool bow pups. They're neat. This almost looks like a like a crank, like a uh, short barreled AK. It's kind of I don't know aesthetically reminds me of it. it. Doesn't seem to be using using any sights though. I must say it must be a real natural shot. Uh! All right, this has got more of these weird moving energy things on it. I bet you this is going to be an energy gun. Let's see. Uh... An energy jig, jig, jig gun. I want to see the optic too. What information is this optic giving me? Don't know. But one shot, one kill. I wonder if it's sending something with an electrical charge that just like fries the nervous system. Interesting. So we are developing stuff. We is in like people. We are developing, uh, you know, electromagnetic guns. They're called rail guns. And right now they're they're not super feasible, but they will be someday. So you can use magnets to launch a projectile pretty fast. That's cool. So we got a rail gun. That's what a rail gun is, folks. I gotta go watch Equalizer. That's uh, I think a Schwarzenegger movie. No, that's not that's not the Equalizer. The Eraser. I gotta go watch the Eraser. I only saw a clip of it, but I think they're using real guns in that. It's kind of looked cheesy to me. All right, it looks like a big old integrally suppressed gun. Boom. All right, so it's a single shot, big honking shell. Almost looks like a little rocket. Interesting. All right, that thing was cool. Ah, I like this. This is, again, futuristic 80s vibes. This reminds me of, uh, not the pink version, but the, the first one we saw. It's uh, There's an old Tommy Lee Jones and a Linda Hamilton race car movie. For some reason, it reminded me of that. This reminds me of going to the beach. Just the, this the paint job. I don't know. I don't carry my assault rifle to the beach. And yes, it's that it's an assault rifle. It looks like a select fire weapon system firing an intermediate caliber bullet, so I can call it an assault rifle. It's pretty cool looking. Everything looks like it would function normal. This doesn't look super fantastic. Oh, poor guy. Okay, now we have a magazine sticking out the side. SD-22 power. So you can see the, the bolt in the rear. That's pretty neat. All right, it's got a carrying handle on it like a, uh, like a belt-fed machine gun. I bet you this is a high-powered rifle. Yeah, that's definitely a high-powered rifle. All right, cool. I wonder if it's armor-piercing. Shoot that truck. This thing's neat looking. I don't know why you'd have the magazine sticking out the left side like that. You'd want it coming to the bottom. I don't know if this is some specific bolt design that requires it. Um, there are side-loading guns. There's a bunch of them. Look at the Sten, look at the Sterling. There's top-loading guns, but modern firearms just make sense to have your feed mechanism come up from the bottom. Oh, all right, well. So we have a machine gun, and we're looking at the side. I bet you all the ammunition is in the side there. I wonder if this is a belt fed or if that's just a big magazine. I hope I get to see him load it. A reload. Oh, yep. Oh. Oh, so we got like a Helica magazine on the bottom. I usually pronounce that wrong, so somebody's probably gonna gig me for it. They make AK magazines that are like that. The Calico? I think there's a machine gun called the Calico that has a Helica magazine like that. Ooh. Here we go, belt fed. Nice. So this is a crew served weapon that homeboy or homegirl just ripped off the, uh, the turret. Fun. What's interesting about the feed mechanism going in there, it looks like what you see for aircraft that like channels the bullets in so they don't get jammed up. I carried a 240 Bravo and I carried an M249 saw when I was overseas, but that didn't have the, the sleeve that those rounds go through. It was just, you know, just the belt fed, just don't get it tangled. All right, we're running a shotgun. I love shotguns. Shotguns require a lot of training. Shotguns are very niche weapons, but they are very effective at what they do. You want to talk about one shot, one kill? It's a shotgun. Now they have limited range. You can do slugs out to about 150 meters pretty effectively. It just turns into a big chonky rifle. Often you'll be running something like buckshot or foreshot. Here's some examples of shotgun loads right here. So we got some buckshot here and there we go. Some rifled slugs. These are actually law enforcement slugs. So a lot of tactical loads will actually be lower recoiling. Lower recoiling means quicker follow-up shots. Whoa, what do we got here? But this thing is cool looking. So we're inserting two big gauge shells into it. And I'm guessing all these things are charging it up. Just want to shoot it. Want to shoot it. Boom. All right, this thing's cool. 
Don't know what it does. I'm guessing all these things on top are like charging the shell, giving it a bunch of energy. Uh, this is just a futuristic breech loading shotgun. It's pretty sweet. This does look like a fun game. I think this is one of my favorite that they've shown so far, just because it, I believe that, you know, in 2077, there, there'd be something like that. It's kind of a mix between old and new. I kind of feel like I'd see in the movie Elysium. Okay. It's like a big shotgun, like a pump shotgun thing going on here. All right. Definitely one shot, one kill. Back in the day when I played Halo, I loved the shotgun. I was very effective with the shotgun. So at close range, especially if you're using buckshot, buckshot tends to spread out. So at close range, it's very effective. And like I said, if you want a one shot, one kill, if you're accurate and judicious with your marksmanship, shotguns are very, very, very devastating. Very, very effective. All right, so this looks like a breech loading shotgun as well. So shotguns aren't as effective at long range, simply because they're not as accurate. Like you can have a rifled slug, but the slug itself is rifled. So, you know, when you throw a football, it spirals. Rifles, the term rifle means it has a rifled barrel. There's a spiral going through the barrel. And when the bullet goes, it expands out and starts to spin through the, and it stabilizes, right? Well, most shotguns, most, ugh, most shotguns are smooth bore. So you need the slug to have the rifling in it. And it's still not going to be as stable as an actual rifle bullet. So they're not effective out to the same distances as a rifle. Like this bad boy is still is having, even at 14.5 inch, 550 yards, that 5.56 round is still lethal because it has enough velocity. Close up, whoo, shotguns are devastating, absolutely devastating. And there's a lot of places where you can't get certain types of shotguns. So, you know, if you can only get a breech loader, run it. Figure out how to run it fast. I know in Australia, they can only do lever action shotguns. Which is something I forgot to mention in that other video. That's one of the reasons the 1887 is so popular. You can have lever action shotguns in Australia. Can't have pump action shotguns though, because those are evil for some reason. Here we go. Is this a semi gun or is this a pump gun? I think this is a, this is a semi. Magazine fed, semi auto, shotgun. It looks like a shotgun, yeah. Super effective. So automatic shotguns never used to be as reliable as uh, pump guns, but nowadays, Benelli M4, the Beretta, I believe the 1301, ooh, that's giving the Benelli a run for its money. And even Remington and Mossberg have pretty reliable semi-automatic shotguns. What is this? This is definitely a fantasy weapon. We're loading squares in there. So those squares, I imagine, are loaded with multiple different, it's either rockets or something. Because uh, square bullets make absolutely no sense. Yeah, it looks like like flechettes, flechettes, you may. If you guys argue in the comments on how to pronounce it, it's like a bunch of tiny little nails with like wings and super devastating. This is, so that could be that or it could be a bunch of tiny little rockets. Either way, it's cool. I like this thing. We're going back to the like the 80s future looking stuff here oh dang all right so i saw maybe six of something in there two three four i think so it's either six or maybe it's just four maybe i just counted wrong that was like four all right so we got some large bore weapon system going on here looks very effective does that look like i don't know Maybe it's eight, because so I see four barrels down there, and they're side by side, so maybe it's launching two at the same time. That'd be crazy. All right, this is definitely modeled after a big bore anti-material rifle. Anti-material rifles are used to take down, you know, vehicles or equipment, but you know what else is equipment? Canteens, canteens are equipment. So there's this uh, argument, you're not supposed to shoot 50 cals at people because it's, uh, it's anti-equipment, but like people have equipment on them, so I mean, it's a pretty neat optic. It's almost like you're wearing ski goggles. I'm gonna call it the ski goggle big bore rifle. So one thing that's a little disappointing, at least for what I'm seeing here, is I wanna know what information this type of optic is displaying. You know, like, is it giving me distance? Often, even really simple optics can give you distance just by having the reticle, and uh, you can gauge from a man-sized target roughly how far away something is, so you know what your holdover is, how high to hold up or how low to hold up the weapon, so that way the round hits your target. But 
That looks like that's it, folks. That was pretty neat. It looks like a fun game to play. Most of those firearms, I believe, might very well exist in 2077. I think my favorite were definitely like the 80s futuristic. I think that those were definitely my favorites out of it. Thank you all very much for watching and going on this little journey with me. Can't wait to see you next time. If you want to follow me on my adventures, you can follow me on Instagram at Mav11B or Thunderpunk Radio on all the social medias. You know, it's actually illegal to, to use a leaf blower around people in Los Angeles and nobody follows that.